Design is about clarity of communication. It's a complex world that we live in. We're always trying to get the information we need. So it's about trying to find the purest possible solution that will simplify the systems in the world. The MTA in the New York City subway is a massively complicated system. We've got 425 subway stops. There's more than 8,000 trips a day. There's 5.9 million people that ride 26 different lines. Mapping has traditionally been a big problem. Back in 2017, they were on the cusp of this enormous transformation at the MTA. You have this 100-year-old transit system. Many of the functions are still analog, still mechanical. A lot of our trains don't have data associated with them. These are trains that were built in 1950. The last signal system that was put in was 10 years ago. Think about the, the changes that have happened in technology in the past 10 years. You're digitizing not only mapping, but communication of service changes. Everyone who lives in New York is very familiar with the traditional big wall of posters. Wall of shame is how it has been referred to in the past. You know, going into a subway station and having to read through four or five different notices to try to figure out where you can go this weekend, what you can do. There was this need for this dynamic living map that updates as the system updates and reflects New York as New York changes every day. We got the opportunity to redesign the subway map for digital. We did a lot of pro bono projects historically. This one was a little different because it was just enormous. Work & Co. were really excited with the offer to do this work uh, for free for the city of New York. People would ask us, how are you going to make money with it? And I'm like, no, it's just a labor of love. It's a passion project. So this is one of the first versions of the map. It's exciting to open it. The story of the subway map is perhaps the most controversial of the New York design scene ever. Originally, there were three independent companies building the subway system. And for a long time, they had their own maps. In the 60s, the MTA was trying to unify the system. So they hired this Italian designer, Massimo Vignelli, to design the new map. That's when all the controversy starts. The Vignelli map was sticking to the modernist tradition, and it's very clear and very minimal. You have a grid, and then you try to make the lines fit in that grid. 90 degrees, 45 degrees, that's it. It's beautiful, but when you do that, you really cannot make it match geography. So he would actually change where stations were and make decisions for the routes that would look really good, but had no connection whatsoever to reality. There was so much criticism about that. If you're a tourist coming to New York, you want to know what's the first stop in Brooklyn. You want to go to Central Park. You want to know where you should stop. The diagram didn't have those references. Hey, I'm not going to the island. Hey, hey. Let's figure out how many stops to the Union Square. Keep going. Sorry, right. nobody can read these maps anyway. The Vignelli diagram, you know, it only lasted seven years. And then Michael Hertz with John Ternak changed the paradigm completely and designed a map that was geographical. And that map has been there for 40 years. People really appreciate the richness of content but it's not as clear and as beautiful as the Vignelli diagram. It's always the question about geography versus geometry. They had head-to-head -head debates, uh, Taranek and, and, and Massimo Vignelli. It's kind of a battle between two different points of view. The solution was just not possible back then. It's something that became possible now. We wanted to make a live map a map that reacts to what's happening right now, representing what before were paragraphs of scheduled changes. I think our objective was to try to make all that content visual, and that, that was the fundamental difficult problem to crack. We had so much to figure out from how to place the dots, how to draw the best lines that we could considering geography, geometry, all that. 
was almost this puzzle, like, what's essential for me to solve this problem? We want to use, like, the vignette map, but at, at the same time, we want to make sure the user has the, the most accurate information on the map. We had long debates about neighborhoods, for example. Should we show neighborhoods or not? When do you show the main streets? When do you show the other streets? When do you show street names? It's like Scrabble, just all these different letters colliding, you know, in this one spot. And you have to figure out how to clean up the complexity. Then it was a process of getting that into a map of real data out of the abstract design. A lot of ideas we didn't know if they were actually going to work in the real world. Actually making it definitely took longer than we expected because of the sheer complexity of the system itself. Let's just say that error states that we never thought would have to be designed or built for or show up, where it's like, here are 27 lines that are changed. That stuff we now had to account for, and we have to figure out solutions for that. A constant challenge was adding really interesting, dynamic graphical features that could slow down the frame rate. When you're dragging around the map, it has to respond. We can't have it be like chunky 10 frames per second, you know? We are like trying to do the moving trains for so long. Moving trains are very important so, so people could understand. It's not only wonderful, but they understand that the map is live. For a long time, the developers would tell me, it's just not possible. But we just kept talking about it and, <laughs> and thinking about it. And eventually, uh, Robert built a working prototype. So he had several sort of moments where we were like, oh my god, OK, thank god, you know, it's going to work. combination of geometry and geography works if you zoom enough. That's the main insight. Here, it's more natural. And if you start zooming, we start adding information. Here, we can have like the parks zooming a little bit more. You can see all the station names. The next level, we start showing the streets and the avenue. The last zoom level is the place that we show the entrance and the exits for each one of the stations. The Vignelli diagram transitions into the Hertz map as you zoom in and zoom out. A lot of the Hertz versus the Vignelli fight came from what's the best way to two-dimensionally lay out this information. The live map lets you ignore the fight, lets us move past the fight. Who cares? The fight's an old fight for when we had, didn't have the technology. There's a lot of exciting things that we added to the map. There's a button that says, now, tonight, and the weekend. When the service changes, you start to see how the map gets redrawn. You tap on the station and you know the times that the trains are coming in, the next trains, and you can filter the map for just the line that you care about or prioritize in the map the stations with ramps and elevators. It's a superior solution by definition because it's changing, it's the current status of the system. The COVID pandemic, it's a real crisis for transit. It's a real crisis for New York. And of course, in a crisis, everything becomes even more clear. And digital resources that perhaps might have seemed like nice to haves in the past become very clear as critical infrastructure. This map was designed to make people comfortable going in the system and comfortable getting around and knowing how to get from here to there. That's only more important as people come back into the system. The map is something that will evolve with time and get better with time and get polished and get more powerful. It will be important for us to get feedback from people. We're designing for people and we have to listen to them. You can have systems that are antiquated, but if you have that user interface that is intuitive and accessible, it can completely transform that experience. This map is a great gift that's being given to the city and the people of New York and everyone who uses transit.